Andrew Jenks is an award-winning filmmaker and writer whose work has been featured on some of the most recognizable media platforms. He's also the creator of the critically acclaimed podcast, What Really Happened, which shines a spotlight on untold historic news stories and famous figures. Everyone, please give a warm Bill Bunch welcome to Andrew Jenks. Lucas, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's going on? How are you? Go that way. Be right here oh, this yeah, way. This way. Welcome to the table. Thank you very welcome, much. Welcome, welcome. What Andrew. do you think about mayo chub? Yeah. By the way. I feel like, have, has anyone tried it? No. Yes. Well, it's mayo oh, and ketchup. <laughs> but, oh, but have you have you gone have you tried it though? The Heinz. Yes. The Heinz version. It's existed no. forever. Not Heinz, but, but that's they're not what I mean, doing the anything Heinz special. Version. You think they have like a little special sprinkle of something in there? I don't know. I just I want to really try it now. Do you work mm. for Heinz? Yeah. <laughs> is, this, is this something you will be exploring in season two of your podcast? Um, maybe? Yeah. Uh, our podcast will fail <laughs> if we do an hour long investigation. Um, to, well, actually, you never know. So I, never know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel you. like it's a polarizing yeah. topic. Yeah, clear. I would love to. for you to be a guest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's um, do it. But, yeah. Andrew, I'm, I'm so happy you're here. I am a total history nerd, and your podcast is really incredible. And oh, I just want to know, like, what. What was the inspiration behind it? What got you, what made you, because you're, you're a very successful documentary filmmaker, what made you say, let me do a podcast? So there's a story in, from 1981, where Muhammad Ali was in Los Angeles on the ninth floor of an office building, and there's a guy, a, a guy who's 21, who was a Vietnam vet, apparently, that was threatening to commit suicide. Muhammad Ali happened to be in the area, gets a call about this, and shows up <gasps> in four minutes. And I was like, huh, I'm a sports fan. I've made a couple of ESPN movies, never heard about this story. And then I thought about it. And if anyone's been to Los Angeles, like, right. you got there in four minutes? No way. Mm -hmm. And then he went up, uh, he talked the guy down on, in 30 minutes. And then it turns out the guy wasn't uh, a Vietnam vet. I called the LAPD and, and tried to track down like the records, police files of that day. They were missing. Wow. And so I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all, but I was like, <laughs> this story doesn't add. This story doesn't add. Right. So I was meeting with um, uh, Seven Bucks Productions. Uh, so uh, Danny Garcia, uh, Dwayne Johnson. Mm -hmm. He's this indie actor. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I think I've and, seen a couple. Guys, that's yeah. The Rock, in case you're curious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Rock. And uh, I told them about this as a, idea as a documentary. Right. And what's cool when you're when you meet with them, they're kind of like a documentary is interesting, but they're thinking they think of you know how do we make this bigger, bigger scale, mm -hmm. and so we ended up after meeting a few times talking about it as the first episode mm -hmm. to a podcast, and every up because podcasts are kind of growing exponentially. What if um, we took sort of the documentary form into a podcast, and so that became the first episode. Very cool. And yeah. what are some of the challenges? Because obviously telling a story with video is probably much easier. Mm -hmm. So how did going to strictly audio kind of affect how you approach stories? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, it's, it's in a lot of ways uh, a lot more fun and interesting because you get to focus on the story so much more. Because 50% of what I'm used to, which is telling the story through a visual, is gone. So all of those. This is such a cliche, but <laughs> all those tools in the toolkit mm -hmm. are no longer yeah. there. Uh, and it's a lot more challenging in that I now have to tell a really good story, just like a campfire story. Yeah. And maybe it's 45 minutes, maybe it's an hour. And it's so easy for you to be like, I have a million other things I can do. I don't need to listen to this. Gone. Um, but I get to focus on the story much more because I don't have to, like I think about this one movie I made called Dream Killer in um, Missouri. And to get, I, I wanted to let everyone know that it was the, m people watching the film, it was the morning of, uh, we were filming inside of this prison. And it was early in the morning. And so we spent three hours outside getting this beautiful shot of showing the sunrise over the prison. And with a podcast, you can be like, and so then it was the morning. <laughs> 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 It's, and it's not that I'm lazier, it's just easier to kind of tell the parts that matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that part of it, I think I've been surprised by. It's just, it's, um, yeah, get to focus on the story more. Totally. Right. And in season one, you covered a variety of topics from like Churchill yeah. to Princess Diana to then Britney Spears' meltdown. Yeah. What, what goes into picking the topics you're gonna cover? The really cool thing about podcasts is that 
And also a cool thing about working with, with Dwayne Johnson, Seven Bucks Productions, Cadence 13, is that I, I did a nice job, a little shout out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're really yeah. good at remembering. Nailed yeah. 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 Um, Always forget. Uh, yeah. Is that they, um, you can kind of do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So a, a really surprising part of this all has been, when I went in, I said, I'd love to do an episode on this thing about Ali, mm -hmm. uh, another one about why Michael Jordan retired, mm -hmm. another one about uh, Britney Spears, Winston Churchill, <laughs> Princess Diana, and Bridgegate with Chris Christie. Right. Mm -hmm. And working in television, and I don't mean this in like a judgmental way, but you're used to compromise. So they're like, okay, that sounds good. No one wants to hear about Winston Churchill's depression. Right. And you're like, all right, you know, cross that <laughs> off. Um, and in this case, it's like, all right, like, come back when you're done. Right. And so that has just been really um, refreshing and, and different. And so I've pretty much picked topics that I'm interested in. And I feel like you can tell that when it's something you're interested in, it makes a big difference. Like, Mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah. It's just like I'm really into you got mayonnaise. Heated up. And yeah. I'm so glad that you took that uh, that message away. <laughs> that whole time. Like this girl loves mayo. <laughs> um, but no, last year you were at Build and you mentioned you wanted to uncover how Beyonce kept lemonade a secret, right? So uh, have you damn. have, have you uncovered yeah. that any was of that? Mm -hmm. Any details on that? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> how did it happen? Um, okay, so. The, ND, the NDA, non yeah, yeah. the NDA yeah. that everyone had to sign going into that is ironclad. Really? So I can report to you that I have nothing. <laughs> I have, I've been, um, I've worked with like incredible people, I've been very lucky, and have been a part of projects where we've uncovered people that are wrongfully incarcerated for murders mm -hmm. they didn't commit <laughs> and have like, looked into discovery and, and prison tra uh, interrogation transcripts, court trials, subpoenas, like everything, and have figured out people that should be innocent, that not because of me, but because of good lawyers, ended up getting out. I can't figure out <laughs> one inch of Beyonce's <laughs> lemonade video. Wow. So, so whatever her lawyers are doing, and likely her, because she's, yeah. you know. Beyonce. Like when you were snooping around, did anyone threaten you and say like, hey, this is not a story you want to uncover. I would, I would love to look at you in the eye and say yes, but, <laughs> but you no can't. Threats. You're not allowed no to. Threats. His eyes came up from Beyonce. Wow. No but this threats. is why she's our queen, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. really good. Yeah. <laughs> like you can find that about Winston Churchill's depression. <laughs> Beyonce <laughs> lemonade. Nothing. <laughs> not even yeah. like someone saying something off the record. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Like, that's the thing. No There's more like, leaks coming out of the White House right now than Beyonce has coming out of her camp. Oh, easy. Yeah, yeah. Not even. Are these lifelong NDAs? Do we think? Are we never going to know the secret behind Beyonce? No, no, no. That means we're never going to find out who really bit her. I mean, we think we know, but like, yeah. we have no idea. It probably <laughs> was Andrew. Did you bite her? Can you tell us? <laughs> no, no, no. Let's wow. actually, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> just say no. Yeah, just say no. Just say She's no. dangerous. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So you're telling these stories about real people, and do you ever, what is the balance of making sure you don't exploit them and that you're really focusing on the facts? Like, I'm sure sometimes it kind of, kind of can get murky, especially with like the Britney Spears one. Uh, 100%. I, yeah, like, the Britney Spears one, I went into only knowing that she had this quote unquote meltdown. Mm -hmm. And then I looked into it, and if you look back on it, it's, it's so bizarre how, not bizarre, but kind of disheartening how terribly she was treated yeah. mm -hmm. by everyone. Like, I, I think we can all like, take the blame, if, if I don't say so myself. Um, like, she was a teenager and she was on the cover of Rolling Stone, mm -hmm. like, dressed, I don't want to say like a porn star. Provocatively. Like, yeah. yeah. She's in her underwear. Yeah. yeah. And with like a Teletubby. Yeah, and it's nasty. That. It's like, it's nasty stuff. And, uh, and then what's kind of also overlooked is she, she was really talented. Like, right. she knew how to market herself mm -hmm. and do all these different. And then, you know, you go into your 20s. And there's been all this research done on the prefrontal cortex of your mind and how the mind develops. And as it turns out, we develop much later into our 20s than previously thought. Mm. And so you're talking about someone who's given not like this profound fame, if you will, like this really huge, and expecting them, expecting her to act a certain way mm. and told how to act. And so in that episode, it was more of like, she didn't have a, like a meltdown is, mm -hmm. is, a, is a really, is a bad word 
that I was using. Mm -hmm. um, because if anything, it's like, it makes sense. Right. Like, who wouldn't react that way? Like, if I, I'd shave my head and start beating people up with a baseball bat. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, she didn't do that, but. It's uh, umbrella. Umbrella, yeah. umbrella. Get mm -hmm. the facts. You know what? <laughs> I, and I love our, list, I love our listeners um, because I, we did a, a, an episode on, on a, a guy who's been wrongfully incarcerated for mm -hmm. the murder of Michael Jordan's dad. Mm -hmm. We did another um, episode about Winston Churchill's depression, uh, yada, yada, yada. I got the umbrella wrong, and I said bat uh. on the podcast. And my Twitter handle, right. like, yo, you got this wrong. <laughs> you know, facts are facts. Right. And I went Fake back news. into the cut and Shame. adjusted it accordingly. Wow. Oh, are, are there like people like you two kind of yeah, got yeah. On yeah. well because those yeah. bat fans are also, also like yeah. protective and a bat them. is yeah. so different than an umbrella. Yeah, you know, if she came with a bat, you'd be like, oh no, she has no, like what you if, know. What if you combined a bat and an umbrella? We, I mean, umbrellas don't need to be more dangerous. They're so <laughs> dangerous. Do you know the number of injuries that go every year, but people getting poked in the eye because no one's walking and thinking about other mm. people? Umbrellas I, are poorly made. Yes. Going off that feedback from from, from Twitter users, are there any stories that people really want? Want you to tackle that that, mm. that your listeners really want you to kind of delve into? Yes, uh, uh, yes. Um, so one that I heard a lot, which we're going to do, mm -hmm. is uh, the Twenty Seven Club. Oh mm. yeah, um, that's a good one. Uh, that was something that came up quite a bit. Uh, there was a few people had recommended, which we're going to do. Remember Balloon Boy? Yeah, yeah. The, yes. the twelve year old oh. who one day there's like this alien looking spaceship that's yep. like traveling around Colorado, and there was a boy in it. <laughs> yeah. And then it turns out there wasn't. And, and the sketchy dad. And it was, yeah, and it was breaking news, and people were going crazy. And like, you can look on YouTube, the footage, and it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, we, look into, we look into that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, so those are like two ones, two of the ones that, that come yeah, to mind. Gone, yeah. mm. uh, Dave Chappelle was another one in terms of when he quit his show. And then I, I just a lot of people before what happened at the U.S. Open, yeah. were talking about Serena Williams, and yeah. so we do a our episode that came out today um, is about something that happened to her uh, at the 2001 at a 2001 Indian Wells yeah. tournament. Mm -hmm. What is that? What happened to her? Yeah. So uh, there was when she was I think 19, her sister was 21. I may have that slightly wrong. I should know. There was there's a big tennis tournament called Indian Wells. And they were going to play each other in the semifinals. And it was this big match. It was broadcast live on ESPN. There's these two sisters that are, you know, up and comers and, and the whole nine yards. And four minutes before they're about to play, uh, some, they announce on the court that Venus is injured and won't be playing, and the match is off. And so Serena automatically advances to the finals. Mm. And everyone started claiming that their dad, Richard Williams, oh, right. had told Venus not to play. And, uh, and that he was orchestrating, whenever they would play, that he would orchestrate these, these, cool, yeah. these mm -hmm. sorts of things. And I thought that was interesting. Like, yeah. that's a pretty hefty accusation. And uh, they've played each other quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so I started to look into it. And I don't want to. I don't want to give it away. Mm -hmm. But suffice to say, what I thought would be, I was just kind of interested and thought would be like a five minute mm -hmm. explanation, is a hour and a half wow. episode. Wow. Uh, and had no idea. You know, I've been working on it for like eight months. Had no idea that what just happened at the U.S. Mm -hmm. Open, you know, a few weeks ago was going right. to create this stir. Mm -hmm. But. Um, yeah, we'll get that sounds, I'll definitely listen to that. And though. that gets into other stuff, right? She got booed when she came back for the final by the crowd. It yeah, was the whole thing, right? racist stuff. I was, yeah, <laughs> I'm right. a big Serena fan. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But so, it, it was a, it was a, it's a big deal. It was yeah. a big deal, and I think, you know, what just happened at the U.S. Open with her, um, I feel like everyone was so quick to have an opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's so easy to do. And if you really look at the larger picture of her career and the context, uh, it makes so much sense, kind of what happened. Mm -hmm. And I'll admittedly say I've become a hardcore Serena Williams fan. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, Get I on think, board. <laughs> I think she's, uh, if you look objectively speaking, yeah. she's the best athlete, male or female, of all time. Right. 
right. just in terms of percentage wins. She has something like 86% yeah. of any time she plays, she's going to win. That kills any, like Tiger Woods, uh, <laughs> anyone, like other tenants. Forget about it. And then what also interested me is people were in an uproar, some people, and now I am giving my opinion. So uh, <laughs> there was this uproar over how she acted at the US Open. And if you look at it historically, it was the third time she's been uh, uh, can, can you curse on yeah, the show? Yeah, yeah. The third time it. she's been really just like. Fucked over? Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> like, there we go. That's the word. Like, mm -hmm. really, really just these bizarre rules that no one has ever instituted suddenly appearing. Right. And it's like, what the fuck is going What is, <laughs> what are you doing? And, and it also is, if you look at it, a classic example of sexism, and I don't mean to like preach or anything here, but when Johnny Mac would throw a tantrum, people would be like, fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've been to so many NBA games where a player is ejected, thrown out for doing crazy shit, and they get a standing ovation. Mm -hmm. And then it's, she does it, and everyone's like, well, is that appropriate? Da -da 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 -da. And it's like, why is that a conversation? If I, any athlete, now I'm going on a bit of a, any, <laughs> a, any athlete though, if they care, most people are like, hell yeah. Like, don't call yeah. me a cheater. Yeah. What do you, what do you, you know, like, so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Andrew, I'm so excited to listen to this podcast because yeah. the diversity of topics, the detail, mm -hmm. I feel like I want to learn so much about like the little things I thought were so little and then being so yeah, big. Yeah, fun ride. Apple Podcasts. Apple, yes. Apple Podcasts. Andrew, thanks so much for yeah. coming. Everyone, Thank give you. a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.